God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Welcome and greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a wonderful day to give God honor, praise, and glory. For this is the day that he hath made. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so glad that you've tuned in. Hit that like button, that share button. Call everybody. Text somebody. Let them know that we're on the air with the word of God today. We want to take the word to the world. I am Bishop Donald Golder. I'm the proud pastor of the Temple of Praise Church. We are located at 3969 Meadows Drive, Indianapolis, Indiana. We are in in-person worship, and we would love for you to be a part of our in-person worship. We would love for you to come with your whole entire family and just enjoy the Lord together with us, for he is worthy to be praised. Amen. You are welcome to this house to worship and praise God with us. I want you to get your Bibles out, your electronic devices out, and follow us in the word of God on today. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We bless you. We honor you. We love you. You're good. You're great. You're awesome. Nobody like you. You have no counterpart and no competition. You're God all by yourself. And we thank you for being that God in our lives who has brought us out of darkness into this marvelous light. God, let your word go forth today. Lord God, in anointed, in anointed in clarity of thought, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let somebody be saved, healed, set free, delivered, and changed. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Get those Bibles out. Amen. If you want to be saved, put your name and number in the comment section or the inbox. If you want to be a member of the church, put your name and number in the comment section or the inbox, and we will reach out to you immediately. Amen. If you want special prayer, same thing, name and number in the uh, comment box or in the inbox. God bless you. Amen. Let's go straight to the word today. I want to talk about breaking curses, breaking curses. A curse is still alive and prevalent today. Well, you'll find out shortly through today's lesson. I want you to go to the book of Romans right quick. Go to Romans, the fifth chapter, verses 17 through 21. Uh, but I want you to understand, my brothers and sisters, curses are still alive uh, and well, unfortunately. Praise God. Romans, the fifth chapter, verse 17 through 21, the Bible says, For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in the life by one. Who is that one? Jesus Christ. Verse 18 says, Therefore, as by the offense of one, Judgment came upon all. Judgment came upon all men, amen, to, con con to, to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Verse 19 says, for as by one man's disobedience, speaking of Adam there, one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one, speaking of Jesus, shall many be made righteous. Amen. Verse 20 says, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. And that does not give us, grace does not give us a license to sin. Amen. Verse 21 says that as sin has reigned unto death, notice what it says, that as sin hath reigned unto death. Even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ, our Lord. We're talking about breaking curses here. The thing that breaks, is, breaks curses is the grace of God abounding in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Judgment came upon all of us because of sin, because of one man's disobedience. But because of one other man's obedience, we can now experience the awesome grace of God. Now, brothers and sisters, there are two major categories of curses. Number one is personal sin. Number two is generational. One might ask, are curses still applicable today? Yes, they are. According to Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, we'll go there in just a second, verses 45 and 46. Curses are still happening today. Go there right quick for me. I want to prove it to you. De Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, verses 45 and 46. The Bible says uh, in, that, in that text, Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee 
and shall pursue thee and overtake thee if thou be destroyed because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God and to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. When we don't follow the will and the way of God, amen, we're walking in a cursed life. Amen, brothers and sisters. Amen. And verse 46 says, And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. So not only will you be cursed, but you're causing your seed to be cursed. Amen. By not simply listening to God. What harm will it do to listen to God, my brothers and sisters? And so most believers understand how the sins of Adam and Eve in the garden brought about a curse upon humanity. It separated us from God and the world in which they, which, which they live. It separated them and the entire world from God, amen, by sinning them, the sin of disobedience in the garden. All they had to do was follow what God said. And so the Lord pronounced specific curses, and they were related to the serpent the woman and the man, specific curses that was related to the serpent, the woman and the man. The, uh, we'll talk about that in Genesis in just a minute. The woman, the serpent, and the man. Let's go to Genesis, the third chapter, uh, verses 13 uh, th uh, through 15. Verses 14 and 15, third chapter of Genesis, verses 14 and 15. The Bible says, and the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this. What did he do? He tempted Eve, and she went and you know, spread the temptation and the disobedience right to her, her, her husband, Adam. Amen. And, and the Lord says to the servant, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. A serpent is a snake. Where is he? On the ground. Amen. He's going to be in the field. Thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Amen. Of course, uh, he'll eat you if he catches you. Amen. Verse, verse 15 says, <clears throat> And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now, we talk about the serpent there, the curse that Jesus pronounced, or God pronounced on the serpent. Now, let's look at the curse on the woman. Genesis, the third chapter, verse 16. Amen. Uh, verse 16 says, uh, my brothers and sisters, unto the woman, he said, I will greatly watch this, multiply thy sorrow and thy conception in sorrow Thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. So all the pain and stuff they go through, conceiving children, that's part of what was pronounced on the woman. All the pain, all the sorrow in conception that was pronounced upon the woman. Amen, somebody. Now, let's look at what uh, he says about the man. Uh, let's ver go to verses 17 through 19, amen, verse 17 through 19. And unto Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, amen, it's better to listen to God than listen to anybody else, I don't care how close they are to you, and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the <coughs> ground for thy sake. In sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns and thistles, and also thistles, shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Amen. In the uh, sweet, uh, sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. So these are curses, amen, that were pronounced by God, or judgment that was pronounced by God simply because they were disobedient. God had already given order. Amen. You should listen to the voice of the Lord, hearken unto the voice of the Lord, do all that he commands, but they did not. So all these curses came upon the serpent, the woman, and the man. Amen. The serpent, the husband, and the wife. Amen. We cannot escape. Amen. Now, God is not a mean God, a, 
a God that just sits on the throne and just wants to whoop somebody and, and curse them just to be cursing them. My brothers and sisters, we have a very simple thing to do, and that is simply follow God and listen to his voice. These are the effects of curses. Amen. What's the effects? Blessings were lost. Amen. Abilities were limited. Positions and circumstances uh, 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 were, were reduced. And the quality of life was tremendously affected because of disobedience, because they were cursed. Spiritual bondage has all these effects. And people wonder why I can't get from point A to point B. Spiritual bondage. Amen. Check with God. Make, make sure you're listening to the voice of the Lord. Amen. Each of us have a choice, my brothers and sisters, between being cursed or blessed. Amen, somebody. Let's go, let's go a little further. Let me take it a little deeper. Does a believer have to fear curses? Does a believer have to fear curses? I'm going to ask that question again. Does a believer have to fear curses? First of all, believers need to realize that we live in a cursed world. This world is cursed. It's run by sinners. The world is run by non-believers. Amen. Uh, look at the way things are going. Stuff that used to be in the closet and hidden, nobody knew but them and God, now it's all in the open. And they're trying to put their sinful, low-down agendas on everybody, trying to shove their sins and their lifestyles down people's throats. Uh, uh, these are curses, my brothers and sisters. We live in a cursed world. There are people who are cursed all around us and don't even realize that they're cursed. Amen. But God's provision for his people is great. Watch this. Fearing Satan and all of his hosts, all of his demons, or fearing curses only gives the enemy more power over your life. Amen. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he's given us love, power, and a sound mind. So I'm, I must say this. When you're walking in fear, you're not trusting God. When you walk in fear, you're not trusting God. Okay, Paul, back me up, please. Let's go to Romans, the eighth chapter, verses 31 through 39. Romans, the eighth chapter, verses 31 through 39. The Bible says, <clears throat> what shall we then say to these things, I love these four words right here. If God be for us, these five words, if God be for us, how many know God is for you? Who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Amen. God's going to hook us up, y'all. Amen. So does a believer have to fear curses? No. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Yes, we did some things. Yes, we walked in sin. Yes, we had struggles. Yes, we had issues. Yes, we had problems. Yes, we sinned a few times. But who shall, <coughs> who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Watch this. It is God that justifies. Verse 34. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Ain't nobody got no business trying to be putting no uh, 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 no curses and, and, and condemning other folk. Amen. It's Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. In other words, he died, but he got up. He ain't still dead. Amen. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also, watch this, maketh intercession for us. Amen. For those of us who are walking in faith. Amen. He's praying for us. He's covering us. Verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. As it is written for thy sake, <coughs> we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things, this is another one I like, I love. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. But you got to love him back. You got to serve him back. Verse 38 says, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present or things to come nor height nor debt nor any other creature shall be able to separate us.
from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So does a believer have to fear curses? No. <laughs> when you walk in those verses right there, no. Praise God. When you are in Christ, no. When you're serving God, no. You don't have to fear curses. Amen, somebody. But you got to make sure you point, uh, dotting every I and crossing every T when it comes to your relationship with Christ. You got to make sure you're obedient. You got to make sure you're listening to God. You got to make sure you're following God when it comes to your obedience in Christ. Amen, somebody. Because uh, you could, when you, this, watch this, in the garden, this obedience caused those curses. So if you save, if you're a Christian, if you're re religious, you know, and don't have a real relationship, yes, you could be cursed. Amen. Check your relationship uh, with God. Amen. You know if you 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 doing the right thing or not. Praise the Lord. So your relationship defines whether you can be cursed or not as a Christian. Amen. There's a whole lot of people Sunday go to meeting folk. There's a whole lot of people with with with, with uh, maybe in the pulpit, maybe maybe have titles and positions in church, but that does not necessarily keep you from being cursed, except you have the right real relationship with Christ. You're listening to Him. You're following Him. You're not disobedient to what his word says, and you're not disobedient to what he says to you specifically. Amen. He gave Adam and Eve specific uh, 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 rules, regulations, outlines to follow. And uh, while he's tilling the ground, he's, he's over there talking to a serpent, and the serpent certainly got to her. Amen. And she, in turn, got to her husband. Amen. Amen. We got to watch who we let in our ear. We got to watch who we talk to. We got to watch who we deal with on social media. Some folk need to be deleted. Hallelujah. You can't let the enemy <clears throat> start talking trash because the enemy is not a follower of Christ. And he knows his days are numbered. So how does the enemy take advantage of curses? Oh, man, that's easy. Number one, we got to, we got to, we got to, we got to pull ourselves up out of sin. Come out from among them and be separate. Amen. Separated from the world and the worldly system is this cursed world, this cursed system, and be dedicated to God. Amen, somebody. Separated from the world and dedicated to God. Close to our brothers and sisters. By this shall all men know you. My disciples, if you have love one to another, we got to love one another. We can't let mess get all in between us. Amen. Talking about one another and, 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 even though some folk don't even know some folk, some folk don't understand some folk, folk that 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 run around the church gossiping and, and putting stuff in folks' heads and all that kind of stuff. Now watch this, everybody come to church. Ain't for the right thing. And not everybody come to church on one accord in one place, on one accord and in one place. Amen. The devil strategically places people in God's house to upset God's house, to mess with the people's minds and and to get folk all divided. Amen. The Lord told us in the word of God to provoke one another. How? In love. In love. So how does the enemy take advantage of curses? Let's look at the downfall and the destruction of King Ahab. King Ahab. Ahab was the seventh in succession king of Israel. Amen. And he was the son of uh, Omri. He was the son of Omri. He was the, success, the successor. Uh, his dad was the predecessor. Omri was uh, the predecessor, and Ahab took over after Omri. Amen. Let's go to 1 Kings, the 16th chapter. Let's look at the downfall of King Ahab, the seventh in succession of Israel. Amen. <clears throat> the Bible says in the 16th chapter of 1 Kings, amen, verse 22, but the people that followed Omri prevailed against the people that followed Tibni, the son of Ganath, so Tibni died and Omri reigned. So that, I'm just setting up, letting you know that Omri was the king prior to his son taking over. Amen. Ahab took Jezebel when he became king. He took Jezebel as his wife and served, watch this, he brought idol worship into an area of God's chosen people. He brought idol worship into Israel, amen, because his wife came from that kind of background. Amen. You got to be very careful 
So Jezebel uh, was Ahab's wife, and they served Baal. They did not serve God. Go to the 16th chapter of 1 Kings, verse 13. I'll show you. Amen. Watch this. He says, uh, for all the sins of Bashi and the sins of Elah, his son, by which they sinned and by which they made Israel to sin. They made Israel to sin, bringing this mess into Israel and provoking the Lord thy God of Israel to anger with their vanities. They were uh, serving idol gods, amen, with their vanities, amen. And so uh, the Bible records King Ahab, the seventh in succession, as one of the most wicked kings to rule over Israel. Go back to that 16th chapter, 1 Kings, verse 33. Amen. He was extremely wicked. Verse 33 of the 16th chapter of 1 Kings. Amen. He was extremely wicked. Amen. Ahab made a grove, and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord, God of Israel. Listen to that. He did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. He was wicked. And what happened was the woman he married brought all that foolishness into Israel. It provoked God. Amen, somebody. It provoked God. But watch this. Because of his foolishness and people of Israel following him, amen, they were judged for his sins. Amen. They were part of it. Uh, uh, they were accessories to the case. Amen. Go to 1 Kings, uh, uh, the 18th chapter. Let's read verses 1 through 18. Amen. 1 Kings, 18th chapter. Verses 1 through 18. I know it's kind of lengthy, but, hey, you know, let's, let's, I'm trying to paint my picture. Uh, he says, and it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, go show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain up on the earth. <laughs> Excuse me, verse two, and Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab, and there was a sore famine in Samaria. Verse three, and Ahab called Obadiah, which was the governor of his house. Now Obadiah feared, <clears throat> Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. That means reverence him, amen. Feared him greatly, for it was so. When Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord, that Obadiah took an hundred prophets and hid them by 50 in a cave and fed them with bread and water. Obadiah took care of God's people. Verse five, and Ahab said unto Obadiah, go into the land unto all fountains of water and unto all brooks peradventure we may find grass and save the horses and the mules <clears throat> alive and we lose not all the beasts. Verse six, so they divided the land between them, passed throughout it. Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. Verse 7, and Obadiah was in the way. Behold, Elijah met him, and he knew him, and fell on his face, and said, Art thou that my lord Elijah? And he answered him, I am. Go, tell the lord Behold, Elijah is here. And he said, what have I sinned? Thou wouldest deliver thy servant into the hand of Ahab to slay me. As the Lord thy God liveth, there is no nation or kingdom whither my Lord hath not sent to seek thee. And when they said, he is not there, he took an oath of the kingdom and nation that they found thee not. Verse 11, and now they said, go and tell the Lord, behold, Elijah is, uh, I'm sorry, let's, let, let's move on to the proper verse. Amen. Uh, 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 uh. Verse 12, and it shall come to pass as soon as I am gone for thee, that the spirit of the Lord shall carry thee whither not, whither I not, excuse me, whither I know not. And so when I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find thee, he shall slay me. But I, thy servant, fear the Lord from my youth. Verse 13, was it not told my Lord what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord? How I hid and hundred men and 
uh, of the Lord's prophets by 50 in a cave and fed them with bread and water. And now thou sayest, go tell thy Lord. Behold, Elijah is here and he slay, he shall slay me. And Elijah said, as the Lord, host, uh, Lord of hosts liveth before whom I stand, I will surely show myself unto uh, him today. So Obadiah went to meet up Ahab and told him, and, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? Ain't that, ain't that a trip? He's sent by God, but they're going to say he come to make trouble. Verse 18, well, of course, when you're upsetting the devil's program, the devil want to make you the, 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 the victim, make act like you the one causing trouble. Verse 18, and he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. They worship Baal. They follow Balaam. Curse, amen, because of the sins that you brought into Israel, cause Israel to have judgment pronounced on them by God. Amen, somebody. Ah, uh, ah, uh, watch this. Now let's go to 1 Kings, the 21st chapter, verse 19. Here's the curses right here. Here's the curses right here. 1 Kings, the 21st chapter, verse 19. The Bible says, uh, 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 and the Lord shall speak unto him, saying, Thus said the Lord, Has thou killed and also taken possession? And thou speak unto him, saying, Thus said the Lord, In this place where dogs lick the blood of Nabal, shall dogs lick thy blood, even thy. In other words, you're going to die and the dogs going to eat you up too. They're going to lick your blood too. Amen. Let's move to verses 20 and 21 on that. <clears throat> And Ahab said to Elijah, Has thou found me, O mine enemy? And he answered, I have found thee, because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Behold, I will bring evil upon thee and uh, uh, will take away thy posterity, poster excuse me, I got to get that word right, posterity, uh, and will cut off from Ahab him that pisses against the wall and him that is shut up and left in Israel. Amen. Verse 22, and will make thine house like the house of Jeroboam, Boam, the son of Nabal, and like the <coughs> house of Basha, the son of uh, 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 Ahijah, for provoke, excuse me, y'all, for provocation wherewith thou hast provoked me to anger and made Israel to sin. And Jezebel also spoke, spake the Lord, saying, The dog shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Those are curses, brothers and sisters. Curses, curses, curses are judgment pronounced on them by God. Amen. I'm through with that scripture right now. Uh, judgment pronounced on them by God, my brothers and sisters. You got to be very careful, my brothers and sisters, that you follow God to the T. Amen. So how can curses be broken? How can curses be broken? How can curses be broken? If curses are put in place through sin, then true repentance must uh, be the starting point to break curses. Amen. If they're to be broken. Only then can spiritual authority be exercised effectively to remove the effects of curses. Amen. You can remove them by walking in the perfect will of God. Amen. Now let's go to Leviticus, the 26th chapter, verses 39 through 42. The Bible says, and they that are left of you shall pine away in the iniquity in your enemies' lands, and also in the iniquities of their fathers shall thy pine away with them. Verse 40, if they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespass against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me, 
and that I also have walked contrary unto them and have brought them into the land of their enemies. If then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled and they accept uh, and, and they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity, then will I remember my covenant with Jacob and also my covenant with Isaac and also my covenant with Abraham will I remember and I will remember the land. In other words, repent, turn around, amen, confess, amen, admit your wrong, praise the Lord. That is the start, amen, of breaking curses, amen, being honest, praise the Lord, somebody. Go to Jeremiah, the 14th chapter, verse 10. Jeremiah, the 14th chapter, verse 10. Hallelujah. Thus said the Lord unto his people, or to this people, thus have they loved to wander. They have not refrained their feet. Therefore, the Lord does not accept them. He will now remember their iniquity and visit their sins. Verse 11 says, <coughs> Then saith the Lord unto me, Pray not for this people for their good. When they fast, I will not hear. I will not hear their cry. And when they offer burnt offering and oblation, I will not accept them, but I will consume them by the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence. Then says the Lord, ah, Lord God, behold, the prophet say unto them, ye shall not see the sword, neither shall ha ye have famine, but I will give you assured peace in this place. Then the Lord said unto them, the prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination and a thing of naught and the deceit of their heart. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, amen, uh, uh, concerning the prophets that prophecy in my name and I sent them not, yet they say sword and famine shall not uh, uh, be in the land. By sword and famine shall thou, those prophets be consumed. I want to stop right there. Amen. You got to watch these fake false prophets, my brothers and sisters. Amen. Now let's go. And I believe uh, this is my last scriptures for the day. Amen. I believe uh, I want to go to Psalms, the 106 Psalm, verses 6 and 7, and then verses 13 through 15 in the 106th chapter of the book of Psalm. Amen. Verses 6 and 7. Amen. I'm talking about how curses can be broken by being repentant unto God. Uh, verse 6 says, we have sinned with our fathers. You know, we have committed iniquity. We have done wickedly. Uh, Israel was under a wicked leader. Amen. That, that caused them to end up being in judgment, caused judgment to be pronounced on them. Amen. Verse seven says, our fathers understand not thy wonders in Egypt. They remembered not the multitude of thy mercies, but provoked him at the sea, even at the Red Sea. Amen. Uh, now go to verses 13 through 15 of the 106th Psalm. And I believe we'll be through from there. Verses 13 uh, through 15. Amen. They soon forgot his works. How often the people, I mean, even people that come in church, you soon forget how God bought you out. You soon forget how God delivered you. Get with the wrong folk in church. Amen. They soon forgot his works. They waited not for his counsel, but lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted God in the desert. And he gave them their request, but sent leanness unto their souls. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the bottom line is we must follow Christ. Curses are broken by the grace of God through relationship with God. I don't have time to read uh, all of Romans, the sixth chapter. But I want you to go into the sixth chapter of Romans. Amen. Later on in your leisure and read how curses can be broken. What shall we say then, then to these things? Verse one says uh, in, in Romans, the sixth chapter. What shall we say? Uh, shall we continue in sin that grace uh, uh, may abound? No, God forbid. Uh, grace does not give you a license to sin. Uh, all 
are under the umbrella of God's grace right now, but it does not give us a license to sin. He says in verse two, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Amen. So in other words, when you come to Christ, amen, sin dies in your life. So if it's dead, uh, 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 how can you continue on? Amen. But if we want to give it, give sin mouth to mouth resuscitation, amen. We want to, we want to uh, uh, plug, plug sin back into the life support. Amen. Then we start walking back in curses. We start walking back in judgment. Amen. But grace brings us out of the curse. Amen. Amen. Where grace abound, uh, uh, where sin abound, grace does much more abound. Amen. But again, grace is not a license to sin. He says in verse three uh, uh, of the sixth chapter of Romans, know ye not that many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. In other words, when you went in that watery grave, that's the reason sprinkling don't do it for you. You got to uh, uh, make a public declaration by faith. Go down in waters of baptism in the awesome name of Jesus and arise to walk in the newness of life. He says, therefore, in verse four, therefore we are buried with him by baptism under his death. Now watch this. If you sprinkled, you're not buried. If you sprinkled, you're not buried. You're just getting a little cold chill. Hey, man. And a baby don't bit more no. You know, in the Catholic Church, they sprinkle their babies. When they christen, they, they sprinkle them. The baby don't know they've been so-called baptized. Hey, Amen. There's not a sprinkling baptism in this Bible. Nowhere. Therefore, we are buried, buried, buried. When you go to the graveyard and you bury a loved one, they put them down in the dirt. When we bury them in, in waters of baptism, we put them down in the water. Amen. We are buried by baptism into death. All men, all sins, all ways have died. Amen. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in the what? Newness of life. Amen. That's how we break curses over our lives, my brothers and sisters. Verse 5, for if we had been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. We rise alive. He has quickened us. Amen. With the Holy Spirit to walk in a blessed life and not a cursed life. Amen. Verse 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. I never served sin. Yes, you did. You had cigarette habits, you served that. Amen. You couldn't put the weed down, you served that. You had relationships, you served that, that you couldn't break loose from, you served that. Amen. But we have been crucified with Christ. We nailed that stuff to the cross. The blood of Jesus has washed away those desires, amen, from our mind and from our lives. Verse 7 says, for he that is dead is free from sin. I'm dead to that old man. Sin in my life is dead. I'm free now from sin. You don't have to sin. You can get up every morning and make a conscious decision with the help of the Lord. I shall not sin today. There shall not be an evil thought in my mind. I shall not lust. I shall not call that individual that I know I ain't got no business calling. And if they call me, I'm going to tell them today is the last day. I'm taking the number out of my phone. You know, you can make a conscious decision when you get up in the morning. I ain't going to cuss. I'm not going to sin. I'm not. And you know when you, when, you, when you speak to yourself like that, the enemy is going to really try to turn up the heat. But we do not have to sin. Amen. You say you got the power of the Holy Ghost in you, which is God in you. Amen. We do not have to sin. Uh, God should not have to just be everywhere we are to hold our hand. Uh, don't go there. Don't do this. Don't say this. Don't don't smoke that. Don't drink that. You know, uh, don't see that individual. You know, God should not be babysitting us once he put himself in us and we accepted him as our Lord to reign over our lives. We got the power in us to overcome sin. Praise the Lord, somebody. We're dead to it. We're dead to it. Amen. Verse 9 says in the sixth chapter of, of Romans, this is, this is some powerful stuff, y'all. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. 
Death had no more dominion over him. In other words, he ain't going back. He's did it once for all and sin and death for a believer who's filled with the Holy Spirit. Sin and death has no more dominion over us. Well, I see y'all burying saints all the time. That's the ultimate. That's the supreme to, for to be absent from the body to be present with the Lord. We know we didn't come here to stay. Everything that lives dies. Everything that lives dies. I'm going to say it again. Everything that lives dies. Amen. Now, was it not supposed to be like that in the beginning? We the one messing up with sin, with sin. Amen. Amen. Verse 10 says, for in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. That's where we're going. Amen. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin but alive unto God through the Lord Jesus Christ who liveth. Amen, somebody. I'm going to stop right there. Amen. But that's how, and I want you to get into that sixth chapter of Romans for yourself, but that's how you break the curses. I don't care if it's because of your own sin. I don't care if it's because generationally or whatever. That's how you break the curses. Walking in the grace of God and walking in relationship with God and not religion with God. Amen. Walking in his righteousness. Amen. That's how you break, amen, the curse of sin over your life. Amen. Of the stuff that you once liked. You was once a servant to sin. Amen. But when Christ found you and you accepted him as your personal savior, amen, that breaks the curse. So watch this. When you go back into it, then you bring him back judgment and curses on your life. Watch this. Demons will attack you in, by multitudes. Amen. Seven times greater. Amen. Because uh, they want to keep you. They want to keep you bound. They want to keep you with them. They want you to be in hell with them. My brothers and sisters, make a conscious decision. I'm going to walk in God's blessings and not any curses. I'm going to walk in this unmerited favor called grace, amen, that gave me uh, the ability <clears throat> to stand up against sin, amen. I know, I know, I know you don't hear preachers talking about this. I mean, we living in the age and a generation now where people that talk about sin, are they old folk that's old fashioned? Yeah, cause you know, a lot of people today in church just doing whatever they wanna do and still call themselves holy and saved and sanctified and, and filled with the Holy Ghost and all. But we got some bad examples out here that's reading a lot of folk in the world don't believe much about the church anymore. Amen. We got preachers denouncing the gospel, believing, saying ain't no truth to it. Uh, it was all fake and phony and, 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 and words put together to keep us in oppression and all that kind of stuff. The devil has come up with so many ways to, to, to destroy the people of God. But I don't care, you know, what they say. You got to know for yourself that I serve a God that has brought me out of darkness into this marvelous light. And the curse of sin and judgment has been broken by God's blood. Amen. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. So walk in that grace. Amen. And make a decision on every day you rise. I shall not walk in a cursed life, but I shall walk in a blessed life through the grace of God. God bless you. I'm going to stop right there. I'm Bishop Donald Goda. I am proud pastor of beautiful people of God at Temple of Praise Assembly. I would love for you, you and especially you to come and be a part of our great church. Amen. We're located at 3969 Meadows Drive, Indianapolis, Indiana. Amen. Our phone number is 317-591-1060. We'd love for you to be a part of this church. Amen. Uh, uh, it's a beautiful church. Uh, we have some great members that will love you to life. Amen. And we want you to be a great part of it. We are in person every Sunday, every Sunday. But if you don't feel comfortable, we online and all these social media sites every week on Sundays and on Wednesday, 12 noon and at 7. Also catch our radio broadcast every Tuesday.
from 6 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. on AM 13 to the light, 92.7 FM and 95.1 FM WTLC. 6.30, 6 to 6.30 in the p.m. every Tuesday. If you're not in this area, uh, Indianapolis area, you can also catch us on praiseindy.com. Central Standard Time, praiseindy.com. Go to the website and pick it up through that, praiseindy.com. God bless your hearts. We love you. We love you and we thank God for you. Father, we praise you for your word today. Thank you for pulling us out of a cursed life into a blessed life through your grace, through your mercy. We praise you for uh, not condemning us, but consecrating us. Amen. To your love, your power, your peace, and sharing everything that you have with us. Oh, God, we praise you for greater love and no man than this, that a man will lay down his life for friends. We thank you for those that tuned in today. We pray, God, that your word has never, ever returned to you void, but it shall accomplish everything it's been sent out to do. So have your way, God, we pray, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, God, we praise your name for being such a wonderful Savior, such a such, such an awesome friend, such a great father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Until we meet again, you be blessed.